I, all I remember was seeing the bullet coming down and hitting me in my eye and I'm thinking I'm going to die. I actually thought I was going to die and no one could do anything about it. I'm not proud of the life we led. I'm not proud of the things we've done, but what we've done, we've done very seriously and it, and it was for a reason. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. This is season two, all about crime. And opposite me today, we've got the one and only Marvin Herbert. He's known for 20 plus murder investigations. He's the man, the myth, the legend. Marvin, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on. How are you? Um, well, my brother, do you know what? Um, to put it eloquently, I've turned out better than I imagined gone further than I ever dreamed, and I'm doing things I never thought possible. <sighs> well, that made me emotional. <laughs> I'm like, this is, this That's is, serious, is, yeah? Is, yeah, man, like, it's, it's next, what I'm doing is next level, like, no one ever thought that I'd do what I'm doing now. Even earlier, you're just on the phone saying you're going to train the Met. Like, well, not train them, I'm no, going to facilitate courses with the Met and engage and do things within the Met, with the Met, and I'm going to tell them my story. I'm going to try to create some kind of amalgamation with the community of urban England, um, the Met and music, sports, and intelligence, really. So there's a, a greater plan ahead, afoot, I should say, a greater plan afoot, and a hopefully it'll be received well because I do believe that everybody wants to make money, live happy and live in peace. Do you know what 100%. I mean? so if we can create that through un so called unethical avenues in certain worlds and languages, then why not give it a try? Nothing else has happened or worked so far. Yeah. So I do believe that Herbert Marvin Projects is my new CIC company is uh Gonna steer the way towards change for the, the like minded youth like myself. Do you know what I mean it's yeah. about it's about trying to change what I help develop, design and create with all the madness on the road today. Do you know what I mean? It's just being a part of that criminal fraternity. For many of the people who don't know who you are, I'm not sure if there is many people because every single person I've said I'm doing this podcast with was like, Oh my god, yeah, I know him. Oh my god, I know him, I've heard of him, I've watched his thing. I want people who are new to the to your life story to understand obviously who you are and what you've asked. So if we can throw it back to why you're a lifelong criminal, what happened, and if we could take it all the way back to your childhood and explain some memories from your childhood, I'm sure you have some good memories and bad memories. What's going on? I hope you're all enjoying the episode so far. Make sure you all scroll down, hit subscribe. We're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers. At 10,000 subscribers, there's gonna be an amazing episode that's already planned in the pipeline. So hit subscribe. I have a, a myriad of knowledgeable experiences and learning. You know, it's, memories are just all learning. It's everything you've got to learn in life. But yeah, it started um, in 2002. No, it started in 1990, 1972. 1972, so what I was saying, all my kids' birthdays just flashed in front of my eyes then. <laughs> right, so um, my life began in 1972 in Liverpool. I was born in Fazatley Hospital. Um, I was an early morning birth. Um, born a year with a rat, believe it or not. Um, yeah, we lived in Kirby first lasting memories that I have. All the lasting memories I've got are all traumas. So like I've said, I fell over on a bottle in Kirby, broke my leg, out to get stitches. A bottle went through this leg, went through the right thigh, popped out, and I had to get stitches in that. That was my first bit of trauma. Then my dad burnt my hand for setting the house on fire in that house, which I never knew about until after my third first podcast because my mum said well, didn't you remember this I said no nah. so my dad burnt my hand at 18 months old when me and my brother was playing dares so who could put their foot in the fire the longest this is when we used to have coal fires back in yeah, the day yeah. so I put my foot in and held it in there longer than him but I had a coal a hot 
rock of coal stuck to my shoe. So as I've pulled it out, the rock's gone into the curtains, is flammed up and the app been burnt down. My dad burnt my hand for that. And then I got run over when I was about five. Got all um, weight pins put on my leg. And then I had a pretty, although it sounds normal, we just had, to me, <laughs> to me we had a pretty normal, to me it was normal, so getting up, it was very hectic indoors. Brothers, I'd like, there was four brothers and sisters living in one house, so two boys, two girls, and then my dad's extended family. My dad had kids with loads of women, so my dad had, I, I believe, 17 or 18 kids, and he's lost two. So, um, I don't know. And what was, what was your dad like as a as a father? Well, I've got split, I've got kind of split feelings about my dad now because before I used to hate him, I really did hate him. Like, it gave me the driving force to sort of become the man I've become because of the hatred I felt because of the abandonment issues I had as a kid, the neglect issues I had as a kid. And then basically, it wasn't until my dad died. Oh, wow. Sorry to hear about that. Mm. He died of cancer 2016, but that's another story. Was he on a straight and narrow path when he... When, oh. No, nah, he never was. He done... Put it this way. If you know anything about weed, right? Sensimenia weed used to come really hard and black and it used to be compressed, right? And then that stopped. I believe circulating after 2016 because my dad died because my dad basically done that for years I remember I used to nick it off him like everybody that knows me from the criminal world from when I was a kid knows I used to get all the puff I used to nick loads of puff for my dad like I had bags of it like South Kilburn Kilburn Swiss Cottage Camden like I was the man for puff I used to lay all the kids on puff in school do you know what I mean because I used to nick carrier bags off my dad and I'll tell you the story, right? So I used to carry bags of weed and shit off my dad, right? And I used to sell it to all my brother's mates. But I used to sell them carrier bags yeah. for £50. Pound. A whole carrier yeah. bag of it? I didn't, I, I was so eight, you never knew the price of it? You were eight, just trying to... Eight, I just yeah, knew yeah. they wanted it, right? So now I go to Haverstock, yeah? So when I went to Haverstock, yeah, we went carnival, yeah? Uh -huh. So we've all chipped in. Up salamis, right? Kilvin Road, chipped in to get a better load of puff. Yeah. Um about 10, 11 of us, five of each, I'm thinking, bag Big of weed. Bag of weed. Yeah. Come back with these little strips, bro. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. And he was like, that's the weed. And I was like, no, he said one each. And I was like, what? I've got all that for, raw. And that was when the penny dropped for me, what I'd been giving away to all the old lot. So from 11 years of age, I started making proper dough. Did he ever catch you stealing his stuff? What's going on guys? If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you scroll down. We're now live on Spotify so you can watch us while you're driving, listen to us, listen to us while you're in the gym. Pretty much just listen to us anywhere and make sure you give us a five star review on Spotify. Thank you. Yeah, he batted me a few times but I was too smart for a minute because what it was, when we were kids, adults don't pay attention to kids. Yeah. 10, 11, 12. They don't pay attention. So I just listen to them, mate. Find out where all their gear's going, isn't it? <laughs> find out where they're leaving it and all shit like that. Do you know what I mean? And then just, I'll do things like my dad will go to the gambling house over um, Church Road, yeah? And then I'll say to one of his mates, oh, let me come with you. Yeah. And he go, oh, come on in, son. My dad don't know where I'm yeah, going. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I'd go with them and clap them out. And then they come back and they'd be like, bro, I lost this thing. You're like, I don't know where this thing is. Here. And I'm there like, <laughs> I wonder where it is. Yeah, I went to my balls, mate. I clapped them all out. So now there's a lot of my dad's mates that are going to be seeing all these podcasts and a little, it was him. Because when I used to come, I see my dad arguing with him. Yeah. I'll give you <clears throat> X amount. Because Puff comes in bales. Yeah. Like a ton is, I think, 35 bales. I don't know. Right, so, right, so. People don't know none. Yeah. Puff comes in bales, right? What's a bale? It's like, it's a, it's a Moroccan bale. Of, it's like a certain amount, of, I think it's 35 keys per bale. Okay. Or so, I don't know, it's something, the certain amount, I, I'm not, I can't remember all the figures yeah, yeah, now, yeah, of course. but I think 35 bales is a ton, which is a thousand kilos. So do the math, I don't know. Yeah. I used to cut some of the bales and nick <laughs> bales out. <laughs> so they wouldn't, like, obviously I was a kid, I didn't think they'd know, innit? I wouldn't know, like, oh, I'm nicking this bar and that bar. And then there was slabs of, um, it was like zero, zero. Right? It was like soft black, but it used to come in 
10 pound slabs yeah. and 20 pound slabs. And they used to use like a big paper cutting machete to carve it up. But then basically, because I used to go to all the lockups, I was, I was a little kid in the car. So everyone wanted a kid in the car so they didn't get stopped yeah, by the police. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah. that back in the 80s and 90s, like, well, 70s and 80s, it would be them. But 70s and 80s, there was no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. So kids needed to be with their kids, with their dad. It was yeah. a smother kind of. It was a, so I'm with my dad going everywhere. So I see where people hid things. So obviously, I was going all over London when I was eight, nine. So when I'd see things, I'd think, raw. I'm coming back for that. Yeah, yeah, so I'd back. go back and rob my dad's mates, lock-ups and stashes, and, and then they'll be blaming each other, but I'll be laughing with my mates. Yeah. So I caused murders in the fraternity for people because I, I, as a kid, I didn't realise what I was doing. So your dad was making a lot of money. My mum, listen, you don't, see, again, yeah, this is another thing. No one makes no money in that game, you know, on the road. You only make money if you're at source mm. and you're not even in mm. England. You make money. If you're in England selling this shit, you're not making no money. You're not making no money. So all these big drug dealers no, who are saying not making they're making no money. money. They're talking shit, mate. They're talking shit. They're talking shit. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you a simple rationale. So if you could buy a product yeah. for £7,000, yep. right? £7,000. And then you can sell that product for £18,000 there. Yeah. Why are you bringing it on? Seven thousand pound here, yeah, and you can sell it for eighteen thousand pound here. Why are you bringing it home? This ain't nowhere near home. Ain't nowhere near home. Why are you bringing it home? It makes no sense. Why? Right. Why? Because, because it's not yours. Yeah, it's not yours. So you're getting put on here, yeah. and then you're bringing it back, and you're getting it's, you're paying the eighteen, not the seven. No, 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 no. You're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. What are you paying no, there? There. You may pay 24 to 26. So then you've got to sell it at 30, yeah? No, you've got to get it home first. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, so another a couple of quid goes on top of that. So you're making fuck all. Okay, but you told me they make loads of money. True. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Okay, fair so enough, only, fair one, only one portion of that game makes money. Only the big boss makes the money. No, no, it's not even the big boss. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's, no, it's huh? not. No, it's not. Because everything's a network. It's the same as any company, any business. It's all a network. And it's about profits. Simple. So if you keep the business attribute applied to the product, then you don't fail. When you start going street, back door, cheap, 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 sell, 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 it falls apart because the system's gone. So what they could do, what they could do, and I'm not suggesting it <laughs> by any minute, by any means, right? So watch. All the London villains, yeah. all the English villains, all the proper villains, right? What they could do. Right? Now, I'm not saying I've done this, I'm not saying I know people have done it, but... This is a reality. So what they do, they pay seven grand here, they get a load of grub from over there. Yeah. Seven grand. And what they do, they get a load of bits, yeah, that are dispensable product because they've got their millions of pound profit. Yeah, yeah. So what they do with a dispensable product that they can burn, they give it to their mates. I say, get on your feet, son. Sell it for what you want. Do they do that? Nah, nah, because they're not businessmen. They're all scumbag grooming, no good. Every single one of them. But now, nah, I weren't the biggest of the tree. I weren't at the top of the ladder, right? But I'll tell you something for free. I never had to touch anything. I never had a kilo of gear in my car. Never. I wouldn't be 10 miles within a bit of product if I'm at source. If I'm at source, why am I going near yeah. the product? Yeah. If I'm at source, why am I going near the product? Right, so you hear a lot of things on platforms about people and strategies and systems, but I'm not here glamorizing my life because I waste my life as a load of shit. But what I do see is a load of nonsense. It's a load of nonsense. Now, what you do see are drivers, logistics, pilots, and tools. That's all they were. That's all they were. That's all they were. Pilots, delivery, tools and logistics. That's it. They all got burnt. They all washed up. So and everyone's more nosed up, mate. So if you was never around the product, yeah. and you never, how, how come you have done, how long have you done inside total? 14 years in total. And how did you, was Guns any Guns and violence. So none of that was drug related? No. 
You never got caught nothing drug related. No. Oh no, I'll tell a lie. I threw an ounce of crack, an ounce of heroin, and uh, half a bar of puff over the wall of Camp Hill. And you got back for that? And I got nicked for it, yeah. But everything else was gun related, crime related. Violence and just violence. I should have bought my pre cons. I got pre cons. I got my DBS check. It's just pure violence. I was just at it for at it purposes. And I didn't care who you was. You had to prove you was art. And I didn't give a fuck. You had to stab, shoot, or kill me. And I didn't care. And this is the difference with these kids now. They're all going like they don't care. They do care. They do care. I have big men pissing and shit in their pants. I've had people beaten up at their front doors. I've had people slapped in their house. I've been, they're, they're, come on. They're, they're, they're not as violent as they make out. Now, I was the epicenter of violence. You, just, lived you on, just didn't give a fuck. No, it wasn't like that. Well, it wasn't I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. It was, I, couldn't, I couldn't afford to give a fuck. Why? 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 Because no one fucking asked that question. And I'll tell you why. Because I was on my own. Me. Yeah, little old Marv, <laughs> mad Marv, nutty Marv. I, I don't think people call you little anymore. No, but what I'm saying is I was on my own everywhere I went. Yeah. I had it with everyone on my own, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, never, I never needed firms. I don't need firms. I invited firms away. I invited firms on holiday. I invited firms to do shit. I invited people to earn money. Do you know what I mean? I give people opportunities. No one's give me nothing, bro, apart from one man, Daniel Kinahan. He's the only man on this planet that's given me anything. Do you know what I mean? And he give me life. Yeah? He give me life. And I don't give a monkeys about how much trauma or drama that they're going through or how much that they're getting. He's my pal. He's my friend. He's my family. And I'll never deny that man for as long as I live. Like, that man's done everything for me to put me here today. Do you know what I'm saying? And I can yeah. never forget that. And no disrespect to anything or anybody or anyone, but I'm going into the Met Police next week to the cadets. I've just done a, a, a passing out parade in December. I'm going in again to talk to some of the young cadets about what they're about to get involved in. And then moving forward, I'm going to be doing other things. And stay tuned because ITV, nine o'clock on the 17th of January, Marvin's on ITV, son. Serious? Talk, yeah, I'm on ITV, son, yeah. And then, you know what the thing is? If someone told Marvin 30 years ago, you're going to be going into the Met Police speaking to the ca cadets, it you would have laughed in their no, no, face. No, no, mate, 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 mate. This you would have laughed in I their face. I wouldn't have laughed. Everyone else would have laughed. As well, yeah. I mean, but you would have said, fuck it was, that. It was never, I, I, I never, ever, 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 and I'm telling you, I never even imagined going straight. I actually lived, breathed and ate that world and that's why I'm glad I was me because there weren't no one in it that was like me. Like, there were similar people, don't get me wrong, along the way in different countries, yeah? yeah, yeah. But in England, you in England, no, we weren't. I was anything. I was Marvin Herbert, and no one could take a fucking liberty with me. Those that tried, learned they couldn't. In the grace of God, I should say, yeah, nothing bad happened to me. <laughs> but the eye situation, everyone's seen you talk about what happened, where yeah. you got shot in the face, in the head. Yeah, well, got shot in my eye, bruv. Got shot in my eye. Point blank range in the eye. That's what I'm saying, Joe. Tell us that. Oh, oh, sorry. No, sorry, what? You know, see, you ain't even a man yet, bruv. Your oh. balls ain't dropped. So, <laughs> how did that happen? I got shot in it. Right, so, obviously, living a life from a kid, Liverpool, moving up to London, I was very sort of uh, isolated growing up. I felt abandoned a lot of the time. I was very insecure in my identity. So I had to find ways to fit in. And I learned very young and very quick that violence was a good way. People needed to be protected. People liked people that could fight. People liked to tear up. And I liked beating people up for people that I liked. And it was just one of them things. I fought people's battles. And I was one of them people that enjoyed it. If you thought you was bad, I'd find someone that didn't like you. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I'd say, do you like him? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll deal with it. Give me this and give me that. I'll do it. Give me this and give me that. So I had puff, sniff, drink, clubs, cars, all around the world for helping people. I said, listen, I've ever asked you for that. Never blank me, you know. You fucking screw. You know what I've done for you? <laughs> One of them moves, yeah. you know what I mean? I was very manipulative. So if I wanted something, I'd give you something so you could never refuse me. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'd do, I was very calculated as a kid. I wasn't stupid. So everything was double loaded with me. Everything was prepared well, but everyone benefited. 
Yeah. I never took anything from anybody. And that's one thing I can stand and say, and everybody knows that. So, I mean, I've never... I've got close friends that might have a little gripe about money that never got paid when we were kids or, you know, like little <laughs> yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, but of there ain't a man on this planet that can say about I owe him a penny. Well, like I said, people from my childhood can because I can't remember who I owe from when I was a kid. Or, but I know in business, seriously, when I got involved in the serious nature of stuff, I never owed no one nothing because I got my own bits. Do you know what I mean? So... I've robbed my own vans. I went. I've robbed security vans. I've robbed security vans. Do you know what I'm saying? So I never watched, waited, and done nothing. No, no. I went out and done it myself. I got arrested, and then I got put under investigation for maybe two, three years worth of armed robberies. Um, that never materialised into a conviction. Um, a couple of shootings, uh, a few murders. There was Did nine... you ever get convicted for a murder? No, no. Never no, been no. convicted. No. There's, this is another thing, right? It's, now nah, they've covered their tracks with this association law. Because if this law would have been out when I was about, we'd all be fucked. Do you know what I mean? But in the eighties and nineties, everyone was getting shot and killed. It weren't uncommon. It weren't. It was normal back then. It was normalised back then. It was part of our world, and it? it was part of our reality. And we learned to accept it, live with it, and cry a tear, get over it, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I've said before, is barbaric insanity. Do you know what I mean? And it's sad to believe that I I believed in that life for so long, if that makes sense. Yeah, that Do you know what I mean, it was sense. just it's just madness. And it's because I was always searching for better and always wanting better. Nothing was ever good enough. So when I met all the villains throughout all my journey, they was never good enough. And that's why everyone always says Marvin thinks he's better than everyone. I don't think I'm better than everyone, but that's not good enough for me. What was it like in prison? Prison. So prison started in 1985 for me. Yeah. 1985. Yeah. So I went wow. away in 1985, and basically, in 1985, I was a gun carrying, gun slinging, crack cocaine head, ecstasy, dressed exactly the same as this. Believe it or not. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm not even joking. Yeah, yeah. This is how I dressed. I've dressed the same forever. You've never changed. No. Nah. And I haven't. And everyone that knows me will tell you, you know, he's dressed the same all the time. Brown shoes, jeans, leather jackets. Like, <laughs> That's your outfit. Uh, yeah, it's just, I've, 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 got, I've got, now it's brown and blue. Everything's blue and brown. Like, do you know what I mean? It's always been the same aqua scoop I've always wore. Do you know what I mean? So I've always dressed a certain way. I've always looked a certain way. I've never changed the way I look. I don't wear loads of different brands. I only wear simple stuff. Do you know what I mean? So... Uh, the way I've looked, I've looked the same way forever. So even these, I wore these forever. I wore these in the 80s and the 90s, you know what I mean? Uh, so we were just self-developing young kids and we grew up in a world where character, charisma and insight got you into everywhere. And because we started making money very young, we was we learned a lot by travelling. Do you know what I mean? So I travelled all around the country, travelled all around Europe, and we just made money and dumb things. Like nowadays they don't do nothing. They're a bit sort of dormant, the youngsters. They're, they're kind of lost. Where we had a bit of direction. We were going places. We were doing things. Do you know what I mean? But when your life did obviously pause and you went to prison, was that a bit of like a kick in the face? Like, fuck, they caught me. No, it was like, <coughs> fuck it. Let's see what it's all about now, isn't it? So fuck it. Because the worst thing they could do is put you in prison. They put you in there. Did you? Or was it hard for you? Yeah, they put you in these holding cells. I can't remember the name of them. But you go to these old cells and you go Felton, Rochester, yeah, yeah. and all these places, right? And uh, I remember going in there and I had a little, little, little I had a, a cashmere jacket with leather sleeves like this. Yeah. From Gant, right? I'll never forget it. Yeah, so yeah. I had a Gant body jacket, trousers. And I walked in. I got. Because you used to be able to take snap, 200 snap, and my brief then was sweet. So I had my puff, my brief, my, everything was sweet. So I walked in, and now I'm going into a holding cell with loads of people. So I thought, if anyone says anything to me, you just it. do it, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I walked in, he's gone, you, you got a snap, mate. So I just switched on and said, want what? He went, snap, I said, for what? For what? Mm. And he's like, I only want, I said, you ain't gonna fuck all, mate, what? He's like, no, I'm all right, mate, cool. I said, don't anybody fucking ask me for nothing in here because I don't know none of you cunts. I won't talk to no cunt. I just sat down. I thought if someone says something, he's got to kick off. No one said nothing. Then we got to Felton. And then a couple of people come up to me in Felton and said, oh, do you know this one? Do you know that one? 
I was like, yeah, yeah, why? And I was like, no, we we blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, yeah, I know him. Like, I didn't know them that well. I knew who they were. And they made you a couple of days and then got on the wing. Do you have any fights in there, any problems? Never non-stop, mate. Oh, seriously? Non yeah, like non-stop. You get in there, it just kicks off, isn't it? Some cheeky little thinks he's a bad man. He's like, blah, blah. Like, I'll give you an example. I won't, I've gone in the shower. I walks in the shower, there's a geezer in the shower, right? There's one shower and there's about 20 showers. So I walks in, I said, are you going to be long, mate? He went, no, nah, no, nah, not too long, mate. I went, all right, sweet. So I've sat on the edge of the thing. He's washed his hair, washed yeah. himself. So I'm sitting on the edge of the bath waiting for him to get out. So I washed his hair, washed his body. You think he's going to get yeah. out? Right? No. Nah. Starts again. Well, yeah. And then he put conditioner on. And he's telling me about weight for my conditioner. I said, bruv, bruv, come on. He went, bruv, you know what? I think he might have said, suck your mama or something like that. So then I was just fucking steamed into him in the shower, soaking but where he was half naked. I don't know, man, but I steamed into him, started punching his head and he's run out of the showers and said something to the PO. The PO's come in, so it's kicked off with the PO. I've ended up down the block. And that was it. it was just every day was just kicking off down the block, back on the wing, kicking off down the block, back on the wing, GOAD for a couple of months. Like, I wasn't one of them inmates that wanted a, a, a blue band, red band, D cat. You didn't give a shit about none of that? No, I just sold gear and got out. Sold gear and got out. I made money when I was in They'll jail. They were probably happy to out. get you out. Yeah. They probably happy they didn't to like get you me out. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. They probably thought now, fine, prison, yes. prison for me was just another stomping ground of networking growing up. Do you know what I mean? But, like they say, prison's full of mugs. And it's not like everyone in there is a mug, but. Come on, man, you keep repeating the same act over and over again, expecting a different result. It's the definition of insanity. Like, it took me 43 years to realise that. So, I mean, come on, man, if it ain't worked for any of us to now, what the fuck do you think it's going to work for you for? And that's the reality of your life. Do you know what I mean? These people think it's going to work for them. How? Do you know what I mean? How? Like, it's not possible. If it could have happened... It would have happened. It would have happened. And, like, the closest person to achieve that goal was Daniel Kinahan. Look what they've done to him. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't even prove a conviction on the man. I can't prove a conviction. They've just given millions of assets back and not nicked him. But they said, if you've got any information that can get him nicked, we'll give you five million quid. <laughs> the fuck are all about? And if anyone does business with him, we're going to seize all your gear. Why? You can't nick him. You can't convict him. Why? Because he's done nothing wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, he's not doing anything any different than any other country on this planet. Marvin, can you tell us the story of the eye incident when you what, were shot? Getting shot? Yeah. Well, it depends on how deep you want it to go. Tell us the day leading up to the incident. Right, so I've gone, Jim. I'm doing some running about, some logistics stuff with my people. Um, we're sorting a few bits out. Is this out. in the UK? No, in Spain. In okay. Spain, yeah, it's yeah. In, in Marbella it was. Yeah, yeah. So I'm running about doing a few bits. And uh, I get a phone call. And it's a friend of mine who basically, he gives somebody a watch when I brought them round his house. Okay. So me and you have gone sat around someone's house and your friend has given me a watch. Yeah. Yeah? Then okay. we've left. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've given you the money the following day to yeah. go and pay for the watch. Yep. And I've not gone. Two yet. months later, my mate rang me up and said... The fuck's going on? Where's my mate? No, he said, my mate being funny. He said, is your mate going to drop that ready round for the watch? I was like, what watch? When the watch is doing... But he'd had about 80 grand, 100 grand off me since, right? So I was like, what do you mean? He ain't paid you. How much was this watch worth? Um, three grand. So it was nothing? Yeah, nothing. Three grand, a Panerai. That's all it was. Uh, a special edition Ferrari Panerai. That's what it was. And then... Um, so you phoned him up, obviously. I, I said, mate, what are you doing? What are you doing? Go and pay for the watch, you fucking squeak. Do you know what I mean? He said, what's he got to do with you? No, obviously, I was a lot different then, so I've just gone to you. Who are you fucking talking to? What do you mean? What's he got to do with me, you cheeky? My pal's watch. Pay for the watch. I want to punch you in him. Simple. Where are you? So I'm down the port. I said, all right, sweet. So I drove down. I even got out of my car. I had a 357 snub nose. I pulled it out and give it to me nephew. And that's how lucky he was, Mark. I went, take that. I'll be back in a minute. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to punch some little poofters in him. Because... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like, he, he, he really amped, man. He gave me the amp, <laughs> innit? Like, he me... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like, look. I don't put anyone down, but I'll have a fight with any... <laughs> do you know what I mean? If I think you're a gun, let's have a row. It's simple. So, but about our handicaps, about our moving about, he knows his capabilities. He knows he ain't playing with me. Everyone knows that, like, look, I love a terror. And I yeah. do love a terror. And I'm exceptionally good at it. So I'm told. I've never been beaten. I've had a fight every year of my life and every week of my life when I was a kid, do you know what I mean? Like I, said, I haven't had a fight in seven years though, I can guarantee that. Someone's attacked me, people have attacked me, but I haven't hit anybody in seven years. So tell us, go on. So you've found, gone down to the port of Bruce, given your 357 to your nephew, and then and what? And then happened? basically I've gone down the port, and I've seen, I've seen his, his governor, his boss. His boss, yeah? Yeah, okay. he's called Mark Carpell. So I've seen him, so I said, where's your mate? So he's he's gone, mate. I said, for what? Yeah. He's gone, oh, I don't know. I said, what do you mean? So I said, do you mind if I sit down a minute, mate? Yeah. I said, he said, why? I said, well, I think you need to know a couple of truths about your mate. So he said, what do you mean? I said, well, do you know this fella? Yeah. He's like, yeah. I said, really? He says, yeah. I said, well, do you know he's been given, I don't know, I can't really remember. It must have been a couple of hundred grand in a couple of months, because I used to earn a lot of money, I used to collect a lot of debts, I used to collect, and I used to, what I used to do, I used to like collecting debts, because I used to take all their watches and cars, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I used to love taking a bad man's watch and car, just yeah. turn up, tooled up, man, and say, Ch -ch -ch. take off your watch, bruv. You old though, take off your watch, and they've got to take it off, mate, so I used to buzz off that sort of yeah, shit, yeah. take the watches, take the cars, I've even asked people to leave their homes, please don't make me embarrass you in front of your missus, you got to come out, bruv. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> but you owe dough, you got to pay, innit? Yeah. And it ain't my fault, you don't owe it to me. I'm doing a job, bruv, so don't get me a bonus. Do you know what I mean? Don't get me a bonus, I don't really want to do it, mate. Do you know what I mean? And though it was one of them scenarios. So basically it is, I said to him, your pal's no good, he's this, he's that. So he's then turned around to me and said, well, why don't you go home and I'll bring him down to the gym tomorrow? Yeah. So I said, no, nah, mate, if he's going to get a tool, he can use the tool when he comes back, the fact. Because to me, he was always a bit overweight, a bit plumpy. Like, and I actually want so to you work. actually thought he was going to get like a gun? No, I thought he was going to get a bat or a blade. Or okay, I didn't think just, he'd get a gun. Yeah, yeah, I just, I thought, because we had a rap, but had, we, we, we trained in the gym together. He was working with my driver. He drove with me everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Like, he was working with me. So he knew me. what you was about yeah, as well. He was, yeah, he was working with me. He was working with me. He knew he had to fucking kill me, this kid. Do you know what I mean? He was working with me. He, his arsehole went on a bit of work we went on. We went and put it on a couple of um, Romanians, not Romanians, um, Bulgarians and Russians yeah. for um, three and a half million quid. Yeah, and I was getting 1.2 million quid after we got the gaff back and we got 150 quid advance yeah. to go and get a load of people. Basically, someone on you rented a, a, a villa to a load of um, Bulgarian gangsters to turn it into a brothel. Okay. So they've turned it into a brothel, but I never paid no rent for a couple of years and fucked the geezer off. But now the banks are going to repossess the ass. So the geezer come back to me and said, look, we're going to repossess the ass. If you can get these geezers out, I'll have a split with you. So he said, look, I'll give you a million quid after we go through. And I said, well, I need something for my teammate. My team is all going, well, we might get Nick, what? And he went, all right, well, how much do you want? I said, we need 50 grand each, mate, there's three of us. So he said, all right, sweet. So he gave us the first 75 grand and I went and put it on the firm. But then the day I've gone up there, I've got the little firm out and then I'm about to go back the following day. And as I've turned up the following day, I'm with the geezer that shot me, yeah? And as we pull up outside, there's eight to 12 men. It could have been 10, it could have been 12. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a little bit more than that. It was a little squad. Yeah. And, mate, I thought, come, we've got to get out. He went, I ain't getting out. So I had to get out on my own. Because now they've seen me, I've got a front. Yeah. Right? So basically, the day before, I'd gone to the geezer. I'd gone to the villa and there's a geezer in the villa that's looking after the villa. So I've asked him, like, because I've just got out of jail. So I've got my license papers, right? So I've said to him, I've just got out of jail, mate. What are you doing in my house? Yeah. He's going, what are you doing? I said, this is my house, mate. What are you doing here? <laughs> he's going, what? It's not, I'm here, my boss, my boss. I was like, what do you mean your boss? So as he's turned around, that's when I've seen Oasis, which is the lap dancing gaff in Estepona, where everyone in the port used to go, right? So I was like, yeah, yeah. So then I've gone straight down the club and I've 
<laughs> walked in there, booted the office door open, grabbed the geezer, threw him against the wall, stuck it on him. I want my money, you fucking cunt. You've done my house. My house is getting repossessed. So now my house is being repossessed. I've just got out of jail. My house is being ripped. So I played that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that means I've gone in there, but you fucking cunt. My house, uh, oh, my problem. Uh, blah, blah, chill out, chill out, chill out. I was like, oh, anyway, can't. It was not me. It's not me. It's my partner. Come and see my partner. So I went and see his partner, told him the same shit. I'm not having it. I want my gaff. I want my money. You'd get me evicted. I've just come out of jail. Brother, I'll kill people for this shit. And he was like, oh, relax. So his partner went me, listen, my partner's a bit of a dog. He said, but what I'll do, come and see me tomorrow. I'll give you a lump of reddies and I'll give you half of the club. So I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, come down about four o'clock and we'll have a chat. So I right, lovely. I'll speak tomorrow. Spanish fella. Boom. So the next day when I'm turned up, yeah. there's that geezer and another firm of lumpy geezers. I've turned up, I thought, fuck. And I've got to come, Mark. He went, I ain't going. So now I'm about to get out of the car on my own. So I've just walked straight up to the geezer who told me to be there. Yeah, yeah. I said, did you bring my money, Bob? So the Russians next to him, my brother. I was like, did you bring my money, Bob? My brother. I said, you got my money, Bob? My brother, I ain't come here to speak to people, you know. I've come to speak to you. Are you going to pay me my money? And then the bus is going to be, we can go the easy way or the hard way. So I've just sort of switched on him like that and put my hand down the back of my trousers like I had a tool. Yeah. And I never had a tool, but I was one of them, I'm going, I'm yeah, going, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going. Do you know what I mean? So I was, so I was just switching on, I said, mate, I'm going to ask you one fucking question. One question. Are you going to pay me my fucking money? Yes or no? And he went, you take cashish? I said, yeah, I'll take hashies. And he said, then you get paid. I said, no problem, when? He said, come back tomorrow. So then I said, all right, so I went back tomorrow, I got a bit of puff. They never had all the puff to give me, because obviously. They didn't have enough time to get it. No, a ton of puff is only 160 grand, 170 grand to you at the source. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Might be 230, for, 230 to 300 in Spain if you're not connected. Do you know what I mean? But if you're connected, you get a ton for 300 grand in Spain. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's down there, yeah, yeah. Welva, <coughs> San Luca, San Sebastian, all down there, you get it cheap. Do you know what I mean? So, when they've said to me, you're going to take cash, they've got to bring a, what? What, are you going to give me 50 bits or 60 bits? No, 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 no. it's got to be tons, isn't it? You've you got to cut a bunch of grand, you've got to cut a million quid, it's, it's lump. So, when they've turned up, they give me, I think they give me 100 grand and a a few hundred bits of puffs, so I'll give it to someone. And then I got shot, yeah. So go on, go on, back to the shot story. Right, so then... So he's gone to go get a tool. You're and, sat with his boss. And then basically he just walked up there. And I went, there he is, and I got up. Yeah. As I walked towards him, he went like that. Yeah. And I said, well, go on then. He pulled the gun out. And I said, so I was just walking towards him thinking, pull it up. Because the minute he pulls it up, I was going to grab, grab it. Because I've... That moment, the mad thing about life is I've been around that sort of like, I'm not that I'm fucking hard, but I know how to deal with certain situations. What a lot of people don't realise is how guns work. Do you know what I mean? So if you grab a gun and twist it, they can't yeah. shoot you. It's, it's logical. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you grab a gun by, if it's an automatic and you grab it by the handle tight enough, they can't fire or backfire on them. Do you know what I mean? Because it, it, it can't move. Okay. I mean, because the hammer don't. Yeah. It's, it's just if you do. The you know, thing, but if you know, if you use them, you know how to. How yeah, to yeah, yeah, you know, how, you can know how to deflect them. You know, you just, it's just anyway. You just. I'm not saying I'm bulletproof, but if you pull the gun out to me and you got close enough, that was in my head. I thought as soon as he pulls it up, I'm gonna be able to grab, grab it. it. Do you know what I mean? So I was walking towards him, knowing he's gonna do that, and then I could grab it, but he fucking shot me in my leg. Never come up. Do you know what I mean? So oh, he, he he come up and dummy my leg. So as I was waiting for the hands to come up, it never come up. He shot Just me in my leg. And when he shot me in my leg, it hit, me, it hit the deck straight away. So when, once I hit the deck, my leg shattered. When I hit the deck, I just said, well, get on with your fucking job, you fat. I said, go on, go on, because you know you've got to kill me. Do you know what I mean? Like, and he shot me again. Where? The first one through the leg, and I fell over, I fell down, and I've gone to get up. And as I went to get up, he shot me through my arm, and he went through my arm, off the floor, through my pelvis and out my spine yeah and then i fell back down again and as i tried to get up he shot me in my he went down my willy and shot my right testicle into my pants and i fell back and it was as i was getting back up is when he walked over and went bang bang that's all i remember all i remember was seeing the bullet coming down and hitting me in my eye and i'm thinking i'm gonna die and then i remember then i heard him running off or walking off and I was, How the fuck did you survive that? I don't know. 
No, no one knows. Even the bullet flattened in my eye. It flattened, I'll show you. How the fuck did you survive that? Seriously? I don't know. My femoral wipes, you got punched in three places. They said, I'll never ever walk again. And I had, and a, I had a professional fight. And what happened to the guy that done that? Is he still about? He handed it. They went and handed themselves in. Oh, you did? Yeah, they went and handed themselves in with prepared statements that said I was a paid hitman that come to kill him and... I pulled a gun out to shoot him and it went off five times accidentally in the struggle. That's what they said. And I never went to court, I never made a statement and basically he got, I think, eight years for it, got repatriated after half and got out over here. Wow. Mm. I did actually move to uh, Basildon to grab hold of him though. I did, I did, I come, I did what happened, right? So, did you catch him? I didn't, I, no, no, because I put, what happened, this is how mad life is, right? So I've come back to England yeah, when I knew he got out. And uh, the thing, what he, what he didn't know is, um, and I'll tell him now because was, nothing was going to happen, but his girlfriend was an ex-girlfriend of one of my mates. Yeah. So where we were staying, I had his address. He didn't even realise. Has anyone heard this story before? No. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Because it's all dead to me now. I can talk about it. I mean, yeah, yeah. My life ain't about that no more. So the girlfriend that he got out to, yeah, she was an ex-girlfriend of a mate of mine. So I had his address. So... I moved, he was from Brentwood and all around that area. So I come back from Spain yeah. and moved to Basildon. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I went to Brentwood Virgin every day, right? And I was building a program and a plan to get him, take his hands, take his feet and take his eyes. That's what I was going to do. I was going to chop his feet off, chop his hands off and then take his eyes and then just leave him. That's what I was going to, and I was going to do it, mate. And then, so when I've come over to do all of that, I've sort of, now I'm going to do all of that. My daughters need to go boarding school. So I need to put them in boarding school and be able to pay for it for the next 10 years because if anything happens to me, I'm fucked. Yeah. Right? So then basically, one of my daughters went to the best school in the country. The other one went to another school in Ascot. And I'm like, yeah, good. And then one day I got a phone call from the school. Yeah, and they said, oh, Mr. Herbert, uh, um, is there any chance you could come and see us? We'd like to have a discussion about something. I said, discussion about what? They said, well, mm, to put it frankly, Mr. Herbert, it's about your history, your past <laughs> behaviours. We wanted to know if there'd be uh, any any issues. At yeah. the no, 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 no. The schools, I'm not, I weren't like that. I weren't, don't worry about this, don't worry about that. The girls are fine, nothing's going to come. My life's not going to come affect the school or nothing. No one's going to come looking for me. It's not going to happen. So I was like, all right, sweet. So from that point there is when I said, you know what? Enough's enough. I can't do this because I've got to be here for them. My eldest son and daughter, I failed them and they don't love me as they should now. Do you know what I mean? They only love me how they want because of what they believe. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? But if they knew what I've been through and for why I've done it and they actually understood me which they will eventually. I think the relationship will grow then, you know, so. So be be before this podcast started, I said to you, Marvin, at the end of the podcast, I'm going to ask you one question, yeah? And I said to you, I want to know who is the most powerful person you have in your phone book. Depends what field you and want. You've, you've already phoned Harry Redknapp live on the podcast, which, listen, that shocked me. i got to be fair with you. I was like, when you said, hey, Sue, you phoned Harry Redknapp, I was like, yeah, all right, in your dream. And then boom. Yo, what's going on, mate? I was like, oh shit, this guy knows Harry Redknapp. Call Harry Redknapp. Calling Harry Redknapp. Oh. <laughs> nah. Man's calling Harry. How we doing, Harry? I'm absolutely amazing. I'm just sitting with one of my pals about to do a podcast, right? And they didn't believe I knew ya. <laughs> Daniel Kinahan. To me, he's my friend. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah, 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 I don't care what he thinks of me. <laughs> and I really don't. Do you know what I mean? But what he's done for me, and this isn't financial or yeah. criminal, because we never made money together, right? We never made money together, right? I always made money on my own, made money myself, done things myself, right? So, my relationship with him was more about morals and principles. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, that's what it was, morals and principles. Why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? I'm like, Brr. he's like, no, nah, that ain't life, Marv. That's not life. That's not life. Like, life is for living. Life is for building. Like, how I speak now is how he spoke to me. Like, I'm only straight now because he told me I was wasting my life. What are you doing? This madness. 
Like you can do so much more. Like you're this, you're that. I mean, he just, you know, he just motivated me, inspired me. Like even after the shooting, I was gonna get my leg chopped off, right? And I went to see him one day, and I was fuming, like, <sighs> like I was in pain. Like I was in pain, like you couldn't imagine. And I've gone to see him one day, and I said, look, Dan, like I want to get my leg chopped off, mate. Like, can I get a bit of help to get this leg chopped off? I want to get a blade though but I ain't got the readies to get a blade. I don't know how much, there might be a couple of hundred grand, blah, blah, I want to get my leg chopped off, get a blade, but no, the Pretorius blade. So I went to him, I said, look, I ain't got no readies, but I want to get it, I can't get about it, it's painful, I can't do this, I can't do that. And he said to me, Marv, do you know what? He said, once it's gone, it's gone. He said, why don't you just give it a year? Just give it a year, mate. He said, you've been through too much, to so just throw it away now, you like, come on. In other words, look, come on, look what you've been through. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, not over yet, kind of thing. It ain't over, like, give it a year. You can suffer this for a year. And I thought, I said, no, if I can't suffer this for a year, who am I? So I went on for a year, and then a year later, well, 18 months later, I had a fight on a world title undercard. It was uh, Sergio Martinez production. Uh, Manilva Martinez, D. Williams was fighting for his world title or defending his world title, I can't remember. Now, there was a young Spanish champion that was showing Sergio Martinez his skills. Right? Yeah, yeah. So he got put on the show to show Sergio Martinez, this is a kid for you to sign, yeah? Against me. <laughs> 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 Tell me you knocked him out. Uh, no, I never... I, 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 he, hit, he hit the deck. Like, I've hit him. Like, I've got the clip on the video. You can see it. I've hit him, yeah? Come on, Lee, pat, pat. And he's gone backwards, nearly, he went, nearly went down. He, he touched his hand down. Yeah. And another one, he dropped and got back up. Do you know what I mean? Did but, you win the fight? Yeah, 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 without a shadow. Without a shadow, I punched his head in. You can see it clearly. I'll show you the thing in a minute when we finish. I'll show you. I've got a, it's on YouTube, a edited version. Someone's put it out there that, that um, highlights it. I just punched his head in and he retired. And then when we come out, I've gone to the changing rooms after he's sitting there and I've gone like that. I took my finger out because you ain't even seen my limp yet, have you? No, I, I didn't see your limp. No, no, no. See, 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 see. This is what I'm saying. Because look, I'll show you now. Right. On that leg, I'm six foot three. Yeah. 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 Oh shit! Yeah. And you had the fight like that? Yeah, yeah. I had the fight with all that. I've had. The, I'm, I've just got better like this. Life, right? In that criminal world, is something that I'm glad I went through, and I'm glad I. Would went you through. change your life if you could? Um, if someone could turn around to you and say, Marvin, you get a reset button, but you're not allowed to be involved in crime, would you take it? Yeah. You genuinely would? Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. 100%, no million shadow. Percent, million percent. And do you regret anything in your life? Being a criminal. You regret everything you've done? Well, no, 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 no. I only done what I had to do to get out, bruv. Yeah, so people committing crime because of their egos. I didn't give a fuck who you were. Yeah, I wanted that. So standing in my way, I'm fucking taking it, bruv. I went out and I robbed security vans until I could get as much money to buy products. I bought products to get as much money as I could to get out. Then I realised I couldn't get out. I couldn't get out. So I thought, fuck it, I'll start again. So when I, I, I went through that fucking world to get to the top to get out. And when I got to the top, I realised you can't get out. Because it's like, the amount of puff, the amount of money you reinvest to get your end product it's got too many people involved. You've got to partner up with too many groups abroad. Like, it's not simple. Do you know what I mean? Like, to buy a ton of sniff, there's four or five people involved. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't buy a ton on your own because it doesn't make sense. It's seven million quid, eight million quid. So you don't do it. You get three or four firms to chip in with you. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. do it in a certain way, a co-op. Like, it's just what people do is business. Do you know what I mean? You get it to... You buy it peanuts, you get here, you sell it, you switch off. All the others come home and pretend to be gangsters. All the others have switched <laughs> off having fun with their yachts, their flights, their heavy, do you know what I mean? Yeah. All the others are running around pretending to be Al Capone. Yeah? And that's what I don't get. They're all Al Capone fucks that ain't got no arsehole. They've got no arsehole. They've got no arsehole. And I can tell you that now, they have no arsehole. They all talk a good fight, they've got watches. They're all big fat cunts. Look at them all. <laughs> Look at all the villains now, they're all big fat cunts because they're whatless. They don't look after themselves. They've just eh. <laughs> fat, greedy, no good cunts, mate, a lot of them. And that's all they are, grooming, no good, greedy cunts that have realised they can't do it no more. Now some of them are living off their mother's assets and legacy. Some of them are living off 
bread and butter. And some of them are clutching at stores on social media. Do you know what I mean? I'm actually using social media as a platform to launch what's coming. Yeah? Because I know I use that world to survive. I yeah. use that world to grow. I use that world to learn. And it taught me nothing but headache dramas and fucking deceit. And what I realised is everybody I come across on that world was a Simple. And that 2% of them wasn't. The rest of them are cunts. Greedy, selfish, miserable, whingy, moaning cunts. Yeah? Facts. So I used to do things with people in certain ways. And I used to pay for products from the far gap with some people. Just invest certain things with people. Right? And then just think about like this. So we'd invest in the far gap, invest in European gaps, invest in things. So we're investing our time and our effort in getting nicked. Right? And then we take a, a risk to get it home. And then we take a risk to give it to someone. And then they try to tell me that I'm not doing them a favour. How? You ain't taking no risk. You ain't doing this, you ain't doing that. So all you got to do is cash it out. Yeah. Right. So the only thing you're doing is risking your liberty to cash it out. And I'm a right. So the way it's set up was, I used to do people favours and give them a rock prices. And, and then they used to go, oh, fuck me. And I used to have the other bit. So... <laughs> Well, how could you fuck me if I'm helping you? Yeah. How could you spend all my money? One kid, well, he got 120 grand worth of products, right? And went and bought himself a Rolex, a BMW, and an R1, right? <laughs> yeah. I said, where's my money? He said, oh, it's coming. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean it's coming? How the fuck have you got a bike and a car? Well, I'm going to go, no, you ain't, mate, you stupid looking. Go and get rid of it and bring me my money. I've got a problem. You should be. <laughs> what's the matter with you? You ain't done my dough. You ain't, you ain't done the work yet. Yeah. Like, come on, pay. So that world is just full of weak, grooming, no good, deviant cunts that have got nothing better to do than be lazy, gluttonous, greedy cunts. And they are. They're all of them. They're greedy. Like, how could you buy a ton of puff for 165 grand and give it to your people for 800 or 900 quid? Back in the day, it was 2,200 quid. So the older villains are even worse. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because the prices ain't changed in Morocco for three decades, four decades, five decades. It ain't changed. Do you know what I mean? No more than 100 pound a kilo in Morocco. And then you've got to get it from Morocco to Spain. They usually put 40 grand on that. Do you know what I mean? And then usually 20 or 30 grand to get it home. Do you know what I mean? And that's what it costs. And that's what it costs to get puffed from Morocco here. Yeah. And everyone charges through the boat. And then they're my pals. No, they're not your pals. You're just a fucking product that they're waiting to get thrown under a bus. That's why I got out of it. Too many snakes in the game. They're all grasses. Now, what I know is this, yeah? I've done bird for everything. Yeah? yeah? I know people in the drug game that ain't done no bird. Do you know what I mean? But they've been all at it. Now, if you're in the drug game and the police are not looking to drive you mad, then you've got to ask a simple question. Why? Why? I'm nicked. There's South London and West London villains all around me. Top of the fucking tree, right? Top of the tree. Millions of pound gaffes, millions of pound products, millions of pounds lifestyle, right? They're known for feeding all the youngsters. They're known for getting everything for the youngsters. They're known for everything for the youngsters. Yet the youngsters get nicked for 19 murders, but none of the old lot get nicked. How does that work? When the old lot delivered the fucking machine guns to do the job. Yeah. No one gets nicked. No one gets their collar felt. We all get nicked and put on the KA unit. How does that work? And then we got told that, don't worry, son, you're all right. We're going to get you out of it. Did you know, and I'll tell you a fact, one of the major London gangsters, I won't mention his name at this date because it is facts, right? And I'm going to get the person in front of me that said it, right? Come on the visit and said this to me. I'm for, We're getting 36 years recommended. That's what the starting point for this sentence was, right? Yeah. So then... An old friend of mine come on a visit and told me he's got me out of it. He's got me out of it. He's got me out of it. I said, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, but escape. 
da, 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 on the run, out the band, out the bus, out the... I said, yeah, how are we going to do that? Facts, right? Now, I will name this fella eventually, right? And I am going to, because there's just no value, mate. And people have died, people have suffered, and people have fucking gone to prison for people forever. So what this cunt said to me, right, is we got you out of this, but you got to go on the informant's register. I said, what? He said, you got to go on the informant's register. He said, he's with us, you're sweet, nothing's going to happen. You go on the informant's register, <coughs> we'll get you out. We'll get you out. Don't worry. I said, fuck that. I said, I'm going to Europe, mate. I said, I can't be on no register. They go, I'm me out in Europe. Fuck that. I'm going to Europe, mate. Fuck it. I'll take my chances. And if they give me 36 years, I'm going to fucking escape. I don't give a fuck. I'll go on the run for the rest of my life. I've asked my missus already, would you live on the run with me? She said, yes. I don't give a fuck. I'm going on the run. Do you know what I mean? And I knew that. I'm going on the run. You ain't holding me in prison. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You ain't doing it, mate. It ain't happening. I know I'll get out. I knew I'll get out. It's not an issue. I've got a load of my mates. Well, I'm aware of a load of people who got out of prison in the <laughs> 90s. Yeah. And, and I know, I'm aware and I know a lot of people who got out of prison. And in fact, three of my closest friends got off a sweat box and another 16 got off a coat. So I know people done things and people escaped from prison. I know people escaped from Pentonville. I know people escaped from Feltham. I know people escaped from Scrubs. Do you know what I mean? So I know people who escaped from prisons. So. I knew I would have escaped. So I said, fuck that, man. Fuck that about informants. There's, there's over 10,000 informants in the UK that I get. No, let me paid. explain something. Let me explain something. Let me explain something. Right now. So they're not called informants no more. And they're not called grasses no more. They're called covert intelligent sources. It all means the same shit, though. Yeah, covert intelligent sources. Cheers, right? There's some people that don't even know they're informants. Imagine oh. that. Right. So just imagine now, yeah? Yeah. You're a top shotter. Yeah. Top shotter. The busiest line, smashing it, and everyone's coming to your house to get gear. Why do you think there's always a house on every estate that never gets raided? It's in a foreman's house. No, it's not. See, that's what you believe, but it's not. It's a strategy. The, oh, so I'm going to release the strategy now so people know. Go on. Right. So you're serving up. Yeah. You're serving up the creamiest gear. Everyone knows you've got the creamiest gear. So I just leave you, let you serve it up. Then I wait for Mr. Big to turn up. Then I follow Mr. Big to Mr. Mr. Big. Then I follow Mr. Big to Mr. 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 Big. Do you understand? That's what yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. So they get the network and then they get the big people. They get that bit of the network, crash. Don't nick you though. Yeah. No, because you're going to go and find a product again. You're going to find a product again. Yeah, yeah. And then you go back to work. So you're like a sweet grass without even realising it. Yeah, it's true to be fair. And that's all they do. So systems, business systems, business systems. Even prison is a business system. It's a system. So I'm learning all these systems now and I'm using them at my benefit to help my youngsters and our youth to not commit crime. So that's what we're going, what we're doing and how we're doing it. And it's just next level stuff we'll be doing now. Marvin, truthfully, I could sit here and talk to you all fucking day because your stories are... Do you know what it is? It's, it's, it's crazy meeting someone who has actually lived it. Because there's a lot of people who you can speak to and they've been in prison for two years. They've been in prison for one year and they've not re-offended, which that's good. Yeah, I respect people who they make a mistake, they come out and they change. But you've lived a life that only very, 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 very few people can say they've lived a similar life. There's not been a man I've met in my, in my lifetime so far who has got stories... And I know people that vouch that your stories are real as well. So it's not like you're sitting here bullshitting me. No, no, come on, so come on, come on. I, on. I know people who have said, yeah, yeah, his stories are true. Listen to him. So it's crazy to sit here and talk to you. And the way you've changed your life around, just on a positive note with what you're doing with the youth is mental. If you can do it, anyone who says they can't do it can do it. Yeah, and no, I've got a, a mentor and a young kid now. That, uh, you're gonna have him on his next level, and I'm gonna bring him through. Now. I'm gonna so off the back of me, I'm gonna create another product called Luke Collins Walker. Yeah, and he's next level. He's next level, young Luke. And uh, yeah, I'm mentoring him to success. So I'm gonna have a product to show people what I can do. 
live, real live, everything. Because it's not about the crime shit. Like all these cunts that go out and they're out drinking, sniffing, partying. It's all for what? Like, and all the kids now. That's what I was talking about. Like, like you know the uh, chicken shop kids, yeah. 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 Right. Now I'm gonna start calling them the shitty finger kids. Right, because look, right, all the kids in the trap houses, yeah? Yeah. They're working in trap houses, yeah? So they're going county lines. Yeah. Yeah. How are they getting the gear there? You tell me. Up their ass. Yeah. So what do you think they've got to do when they get to their gaff? Have a shit. Right, and they've got to serve it up. What do you think they do? Put it on the side or back up their ass in case the police come? Back up their ass. Okay, so it's getting in and out of their ass all day then, isn't it? So what's on their fingers? Shit. So what are they eating all day? <laughs> shit they want to come and shake your hands and that's where they've got the spud in from well I met people it's a handshake yeah. you knew a man by the, sh the firmness of his handshake right all of a sudden 2000s just hand spuds everywhere no one shakes hands why because they've all got shit on their fingers they've been digging their arseholes out for I don't know how long think about it like, it's true when you say it like when you, when you say it like, like that, that it's true all the nitties all the nitties yeah. are the shoplifters Right, all the thieves, all the burglars. Yeah. Right. So before they used to be proper people. The people I know people made a living out of shoplifting. I know people made a living out of burglary. Proper family members, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like now nah, it's all gone because everyone's a shitty finger crew. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> everyone's serving drugs up, and everyone. If you're, if you're a criminal, you're selling drugs, mate. Like before, you had oysters, you had robbers. Now you've got a couple of robberies now and then, a couple of smash and grabs now and then, but there's no real planned gear. No. They're all shook members, mate, and they're snatching things in the heat of the moment, shooting people in the heat of the moment. All the gangsters out there now ain't got no arse. They can't even run up on people and do them properly, shooting people from a distance. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's protocols to doing things, isn't it? So that's why we were different. If I had a problem with you, I'm coming to you direct in front of you, and things happened, didn't it? So I'm not proud of the life we led. I'm not proud of the things we've done, but what we've done, we've done very seriously. And it, and it was for a reason. There was a purpose behind everything. So I live with a clear conscience because I've done badness to bad people that wanted badness done to them. Simple. So if you knew, yeah, don't stroke the dog, it will bite you. Why are you going to stroke the dog? Yeah, it's true. So you know what you're playing with when you come in my world. Everyone knew what I was. I mean, I never lie to no one. This is how it is. This is how it's got to be. This is what I want to do. What do you mean I can't? <laughs> that was what I was. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Listen, so, Marvin, it was a pleasure having you on here. Genuinely, I could talk to you all day and we could go around for hours and hours, but I need to. we need to end it somewhere because there needs to be a part two in the future. Because right now, as much as your story has been around for a few years now and you've done millions of views, this is just the start of your journey. Yeah, I know. It's, it's about to start no, no in about really six weeks. No one really understands that. We six, spoke a little weeks. bit before, but this is just a warm-up stage. And you've got a bright future ahead oh, of you. And what cool. you're going to do for the youth and inspire hundreds and thousands, hopefully, of people is from some... The thing is, people can listen to you because it ain't some bullshitter who's not done nothing in the past or nothing like that. You've done it. You've ate, slept, and eaten shitted crime. So for you to come and say to someone, listen, it's not the right thing to do. No, I can no. help you. I can guide you. I can do this. Is People are going to listen to it because it's it's you. It's real. It's and real. You know, they're, actually, they're actually listening now. I've, got, I've actually got people that have turned their lives around now. So it's actually working already. Do you know what I mean? So, but when I'm, what I'm trying to explain is because you're someone who has done it all, it's like when you go to school and you've got a business teacher. You look at him and think, if you're so good at fucking business, why don't you own a business? Whereas with you, you've done it all. No one can turn around and discredit you. They can't say, oh, he's sitting there saying not to be a drug dealer. He's not even a fucking drug dealer. <laughs> you turn around and say, motherfucker, a drug dealer. <laughs> I completed that game many yeah, years ago. On. But that's what I mean. No, we've done it all. We've done it that's all. That's what I'm saying. Every so people, everyone can, no one can knock what you've done. You've got the list that says it all. You've done everything. Everyone knows your story. And hopefully this is the start of your journey. And hopefully there are thousands of people that you can inspire. And we can sit back down next year and say, Mikey, I've made 10 multi-millionaires and the rest of it. God willing. God mm. willing. But listen, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Pleasure, Thank you so man. much for coming on. Mm. And we look forward to part two next yeah, year. Yeah, have it, have it, have it. Yeah, yeah. We'll get uh, my young Colin Walker on. Luke Colin Walker, he's, 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 he's one. I'm telling you, he's one to have in a minute, man. Colin Walker, yeah? Luke Colin Walker. Luke Colin Walker, if you're watching this, 
your seat's ready for you, mate. Come on and jump on. Here we go. But Loads listen, guys, well. make sure you like, comment and subscribe and jump over to Marvin's channel as well and give him a subscribe as well. Thank you so much for watching.